Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and today two main things to cover around Australia for your forecast update for today. Tropical Cyclone Neville, now a powerful Category 3, bordering on a Category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone. It has blown up significantly overnight and we're also going to take a look at some significant rainfall expected across far northern Queensland from a possible tropical low in the Coral Sea in around 7 to 10 days time. So starting things off with Tropical Cyclone Neville, it's now pulling away from the Australian mainland. It has rapidly intensified over the past 24 hours. Officially speaking, this is a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone, but you can see it is now developing a nice eye, so it is probably a little bit stronger than that at this time, and we'll definitely be starting to get up towards wind speeds of around 80 to 85 knots, which is bordering on Category 4 status here. This cyclone does have a couple more days of good um, for conditions for it to really intensify in. I highlighted this as a possibility yesterday, where a small system in some very favourable atmospheric and thermodynamic conditions would be able to rapidly intensify and that is exactly what Cyclone Neville has done. I didn't expect it to happen but it was always a possibility and it looks like it is making the absolute best of the conditions that it has right now. Squeezing out an eye uh, in some very nice convection to be fair. I mean if I was to move the cursor just a little bit you can see that there are some cloud tops uh, around the center that are approaching minus 80 degrees Celsius. That's very cold for the um, uh, conditions that you normally see across the West Australian uh, areas. Typically speaking, the peak uh, cloud top uh, temperature, the lowest cloud top temperature, is about 20 degrees colder than what you might see in the Gulf of Carpentaria when you're this far out to see. So the Cyclone Neville is doing a really good job at intensifying here. And if we take a look at the forecast models, you can see A, the models have really dramatically underestimated this system, and I believe the Bureau of Meteorology has also very significantly underestimated the system as well. Um, yeah, officially speaking, I think they're still calling for this to be a Category 2 right now. It's definitely a Category 3 strength. Uh, these numbers here are for the Saffir Simpson hurricane scale. So you're talking um, the American scale here. Typically speaking, Category 1 means Category 3. And the Bureau of Meteorology does have it holding severe tropical cyclone status for a further uh, what looks to be about 48 hours. So keep in mind that this storm does have about 24 hours of favourable conditions ahead of it. Uh, so it will be able to make the most of some very good conditions and intensify as per the forecast model guidance until probably about Friday evening when it looks like wind shear might jump up a little bit and the storm will have a harder time holding itself together, uh, weakening below cyclone status probably by around Sunday evening. Yeah, Sunday evening, early Monday morning. The Access G3 model, generally the more bullish of the forecast models as well. I mean, the GFS and the Eastern BF are identical and it looks like the Access G3 model is also pretty identical in terms of peak wind speeds and also motion of the storm. You might be able to uh, still make out Western Australia over here. It's a long way away from the system and the storm is no impact to Western Australia whatsoever. Uh, there has been a couple of potential uh, or a couple of forecast runs where the system kind of merges with a big cold front towards Tuesday and Wednesday and that kind of threatens to bring the first good winter rains to the southwest corner of Western Australia as we start to get to the east along weekend. I don't think that's going to happen. By the looks of things actually the weather is going to be quite quite good, especially for Good Friday and into Easter Saturday, but maybe Easter Sunday, a shower or two. We'll just have to wait and see here. It looks like it could definitely be a little bit colder as you get into Easter and then Easter Monday, but still the weather looking pretty good for Western Australia for at least Good Friday, and that's eight days out, so still uh, a lot of refinements need to be made in the forecast, but it does look fairly good. I believe that brief look on Tropical Cyclone Neville is enough. We're going to jump up to the northern part of Australia. You might be able to see that we've got a tropical low on the Coral Sea. That is stuck with us for the past four days in the forecast. However, it isn't uh, really a big feature in terms of other forecast models showing it. That is for later though. Currently, uh, we do have a little bit of rainfall now moving through the northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula, north of Cooktown and up towards Laura. Some very heavy rainfall by the looks of things as well and some widespread uh, rainfall. I did highlight this as a possibility over the last couple of days where the bulk of the rainfall is going to be moving out of the Cairns and the Daintree sort of area and moving much further up the Cape York Peninsula and it is definitely going to be over the next couple of days anywhere north of Cooktown's turn to receive some pretty significant rainfall. Uh, we could be seeing totals over the next three days I believe up towards uh, 250 millimetres for some locations whereas it's going to be remaining relatively dry for areas around Innisfail, Tully down towards Cardwell, Townsville and Cairns but it looks like anywhere north of Cooktown is going to pick up a healthy 50 to 100 millimetres with one or two spots up to 250 millimetres over the next three days so that is Thursday, Friday 
and Saturday. The real rainfall returned probably around Saturday afternoon uh, for the Cairns area. And yeah, Saturday afternoon and into early Sunday morning, we do get this sort of onshore flow starting to set itself up around the Cairns area. And that will drive probably about 100 millimetres ashore Saturday evening, uh, which will persist into Sunday morning as well. So it looks like we've got two days of relatively dry conditions there with just a um, odd moderate to light to moderate rain shower, maybe a couple of lightning strikes embedded in it. Um, but yeah, it looks like Saturday evening is when the rain will return for good up far northern Queensland. We'll also take a look at the rest of Queensland and New South Wales because there is actually something that could happen in terms of significant rainfall over the next 10 days, but that'll happen in just a few minutes. Um, uh, for the rest of the northern part, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell uh, what's going to be happening until about um, kind of Tuesday with this tropical low here. The eastern relief is actually probably the wrong model to use to see it, uh, which is a bit of a red flag, I guess, for it forming because the eastern relief model, when it's on board with a cyclone, very rarely does it flop. Um, the GFS model is kind of on board with the system developing south of the Solomon Islands, albeit very, very weak and probably untraceable. It's the Axis G3 model that's really blowing up this tropical low in the coral see. It doesn't bring it to cyclone status, but you can see we do get this weak tropical low that's going to be driving just an awful lot of rainfall ashore to the northern Queensland area, and that's going to be throughout kind of mid to late next week, and a lot of rainfall does actually come ashore, because over the next three days you're talking up towards 500 millimetres of some locations. This rainfall has been flip-flopping day on day between four to 800 millimetres for the wettest part, so still the rainfall very, very unpredictable at this time, but the fact that it is still on the forecast does tell me that something is possible over the next 10 days. This is certainly something not to be worried about right now because it is only supported by one and a half forecast models. I suggest the GFS really isn't quite on board with it yet. If we do see greater model congruency over the coming two or three days, then I will be calling the um, shots and saying that this system will actually happen. I'm definitely. Um, will pull the trigger on this one and say that it will happen with a high degree of certainty uh, but right now I'm just really unsure on the details it is kind of just a heads up that something could be a brewing in the Coral Sea in around 10 days time now you might uh, also be able to see as we zoom out to really encompass the majority of central and eastern Australia the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Megan are going to be very busy over the northern territory and then into Queensland and northern New South Wales as well we'll be seeing quite a lot of rainfall over the next 10 days and I believe it's going to be sort of a three to five day sort of rainfall pattern, maybe day three and beyond, but a lot of rainfall can be expected to occur over uh, central parts of Australia, especially throughout today and then into tomorrow as well. If we were to bring this back to about Friday, you can see the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Megan spinning up still around the Kimberley region, uh, dumping quite a lot of rainfall across the majority of the Northern Territory. You can see locations such as Alice Springs and Tennant Creek picking up a healthy 15 to 30 millimeters on Friday and Saturday, and then and maybe even into Sunday as well, before these remnants extend to a big trough line and start blowing up some significant thunderstorms across Queensland uh, through Sunday and then into Monday. And it's going to be inland communities that cop quite a lot of rainfall and probably some severe thunderstorms here and there as well on Monday uh, night maybe. And they're definitely going to be pulse thunderstorms as well as so they blow up in the evening and collapse on themselves after about an hour of going. Uh, but again, still the chances of some severe thunderstorms cannot be ruled out at this time. These storms do look like they're going to be stronger than your average thunderstorms here, especially as they move closer to New South Wales and then into uh, Queensland and even New South Wales, Queensland border around Brisbane. It looks like we might see one or two strong thunderstorms uh, Tuesday or Wednesday night. It is reciprocated amongst the forecast models um, as well. The eastern rear is certainly on board with it too and you can just see just on and off thunderstorms pulse thunderstorms and some strong squalls throughout Wednesday Thursday and Friday night next week now that is still about a week away so there is still some model uncertainty and details do need to be kind of ironed out in this forecast but if you do live in regional New South Wales and regional Queensland then maybe towards Brisbane and uh, Lismore and um, Byron Bay as well then I think that it would be a very good idea to continue to watch the forecast because it looks like between between um, Tuesday and sort of Friday, the 26th to the 29th, there could be some pretty good thunderstorms that blow up in your area. They might even uh, persist into the Easter long weekend as well. They're not set in stone yet. Things can change, of course, with the forecast. I mean, thunderstorms are basically impossible to predict specifics beyond 48 hours. So for us to have an idea on what's going on about eight days out, that is pretty good. Um, but still, certainly something to be watching, not something to be worrying about at this time. And it could deliver some very significant rainfall totals 
totals as well. I mean, you're looking at rainfall accumulation totals up towards 150 millimetres over the next 10 days. In fact, widespread air is above 250 millimetres. I got that one wrong. So this is certainly something that we should be watching uh, very closely, and this might need dedicated videos for itself over the coming at, um couple of days or so. Um, nationwide, though, nothing too much happening uh, around the remainder of the nation. I mean, one or two wet spots here and there. Looks like Tasmania is really starting to get into some of those cold fronts as well, the first of the winter season. I mean, we're pushing close to April now, so we're certainly in the time where we're going to start to see cold fronts jump up and scrape the southwestern corner of Western Australia, uh, parts of Victoria um, and southern Adelaide as well towards uh, robe and so forth, we could be seeing some significant cold fronts start to move through there as we get into early April. So it's coming into that time where we're starting to see these changing conditions here. And I mean, uh, it seems like the year is moving really fast. It's really starting to get along. Uh, so these changes are actually feeling like quite abrupt changes, to be fair. I mean, in Perth, it's been almost a month since we had a run of two weeks of 40 degree conditions, but it just feels like yesterday that we had that uh, run. So yeah, definitely this time is starting to really tick away from us this year um, and it, we're full blown into the changing conditions of the autumn and then into the winter before you know it it will be full blown winter and we'll be seeing those icy nights across the south uh, yeah and I mean <laughs> for someone who's experienced a, a very hot summer I'm very excited for the winter season and that basically does it for this morning's weather update this Thursday morning thank you for your company I hope you have a great day at work school or wherever you're heading off to today um, make sure to um, leave a like on the video as well and subscribe to the channel Channel 2 for the latest on the weather situation breaking around Australia and I'm thinking about dabbling into some uh, stuff more uh, regionally speaking maybe into Asia and the Asia Pacific region as well as we get into typhoon season might dabble into that and if you do want to see that then let me know in the comment section below as well um, a special shout out to the channel sponsors as well your support really does mean a lot but that is basically it for today's weather forecast and I'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye